I'm trying to make another cartridge video. I got into a bit of a debate slash argument with someone the other day due to um, my dislike of short barrel 5.56 AR-15s. This cartridge right here, 5.56 slash 2.23. Uh, 223 in the civilian world is um, kind of intermediate varmint round. So animals such as uh, prairie dogs and raccoons up to coyotes, for example, people hunt with that cartridge. With... Um, you know, 20 inch or larger barrel, should add. <clears throat> this round right here, next to it, is 762 NATO. The civilian designation is 308 Winchester. It's uh, in states with legal, unlike mine. It's a standard deer cartridge, wild boar, uh, Elk, I've heard moose even, though I'm not sure. So we're pretty much somewhere within that, that body weight, right? Deer, boar, elk. We're not uh, a 30 pound um, barman animal. The way that this round is effective is through velocity. If you get like a 20 inch or larger barrel, you get that round going something like 3,500 feet a second. And it basically explodes on impact, which means it has to be at a shorter distance, say inside of 300 yards. And like I said, out of a larger barrel. Now, if you put that through a shorter barrel, obviously it's it's cool looking and it's really handy, but it's probably not going to do as much as it would have out of a longer barrel. And uh, look at what. Who are the SOCOM guys from uh, Black Hawk Down? They were complaining about the, the effects of 556 five, at a barbecue, and that's pretty much where 458 SOCOM was born. The desire for a one shot stopper, one shot stopping round through the AR platform. This is a. Um, 450, I'm uh, sorry, 450 Bushmaster. It's not quite the same diameter as 458 SOCOM, but pretty close. Pretty similar round. <clears throat> I'll add, um, Colonel Jeff Cooper was a big fan of the AR-15, but he was not a fan of 5.56. He wanted something like 44 Magnum or larger that could stop a... Uh, large animal with one shot and something like this can do that obviously at magazine expense um one second I'll back up i'll show you what i mean <clears throat> here's a uh, just a modified lancer magazine 10 round 556 five, mag that i put a an aftermarket follower in and it's loaded as you can see it it only holds three rounds and then the 20 round mag I think it holds seven and the 30 round holds nine maybe ten and the standard magazine for five five six is 30 rounds 
I, I brought these rounds over here also for a little bit of comparison. 357 Magnum, the 125 grain projectile has been referred to as a one-shot stopper for humans. And it's also legal for deer hunting, even in states like Ohio. There's also a round called 350 Legend, which is pretty much the same projectile, but out of a casing, it's a little bit longer. That's, uh, I think, one of the more, like the second or third most popular deer on now in my state. <clears throat> this little guy here is a uh, 45 Auto. It was the the full metal jacket version due to Geneva Convention. It was the military round from 1911 until 1985. And I heard some of the Marine Corps still utilized the 1911 and 45 auto after that and probably even today, but I'm not sure. And uh, people argue 9 versus 45, but I don't think too many people debate what 45 auto will do when it hits someone. I saw in a video from, what's his name? Gun Blue, and there's some numbers following, I think, but I can't remember what they are. He was talking about how deer hunters kind of bitch about the 300 Win Mag and other uh, standard length magnums, like 7 millimeter Remington Magnum, the lighter weight cartridges, say 150. This is a 190, but um, they tend to explode on impact with a deer. And that round's going uh, in excess of 3,500 feet a second. That's kind of my point about 5.56 five, is for it to do what it's supposed to do on a person, it's got to be going that kind of velocity or faster. When you... Uh, start cutting the barrel length down, you lose, what is it, 100 feet a second for every inch you take off of it. So say a 10 and a half inch barrel, you're losing 950 feet a second for a round, which is so dependent on velocity. Now, I mean, I wouldn't want to be shot with it, obviously, to make my point, but it's supposed to be a military round, right? So I don't really think that putting that round in a short barrel is a very good idea. It might be fun for the range. I'm not debating that at all. But for uh, self-defense or the military or police or whatever, it's probably not a good idea to do that. <clears throat> These big ones here, shotgun shells, are 12 gauge. I've, I'm showing this one here just so you can see what's inside of this. This is sort of the go-to home defense shell. Not necessarily this brand, but double-out buckshot, two and three-quarters. So you see that this has a, I think it's a 12, 30 caliber lead uh, pellets in it. And that red shell there has nine. Now compare that 
to this. Before the law changes in states like mine, Ohio, to where you could use straight wall cartridges like 450 Bushmaster, people use 12 gauge slugs or, you know, shotgun slugs. Take a look at the size of that. <clears throat> and then take a look at this. Quite the difference. Now, I think most people probably don't want to be shocked, but like I'm saying, something like this, which is intended for war, should be set up the way it's intended. Um, Clint Smith was saying how, what do you say? Eugene Stoner and God got together and decided 20 inches was the optimal barrel length for that. Um, take that for what it's worth. In the documentary 762 millimeter versus 556 millimeter, it goes into, I haven't mentioned that yet, it goes into quite a bit about the history of this and, and how this kind of got brought back finally. This also add, I forget if I mentioned it or not, but uh, the book Mortal Air goes into um, the Kennedy assassination and it kind of suggests that uh, one of the Secret Service agents inadvertently shot Kennedy with an AR 15 using these rounds. That would be the uh, the second headshot. And with the way that the author made it sound, it made quite a bit of sense. Also considering how much uh, Robert McNamara pushed for the adoption of the AR-15 for the military, seemed logical. Not necessarily understanding the limitations of that cartridge. I think it's the ideal SWAT team round for like room clearing. This one, 556. Five, but not so much the battlefield round.